should be here, but yeah, we might have to get started without them, but we still have a minute. <coughs> Okay, call a meeting to order. This is the regular Planning Commission meeting um, for February 10th, 2015. We have, looks like, a couple of open hearing, public hearings, and a fence appeal on the agenda. Uh, before we uh, get into that, I'll uh, ask if the commissioners have all had a chance to look at the uh, minutes from our last meeting <coughs> of January 13th. Are there any corrections or uh, changes? If not, I'll ask for a motion. So I'll make moved. a motion. Go ahead, I'll take a second. So moved. Motion by Commissioner Loops. Second by Commissioner Spainhauer. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, motion carries. <coughs> so we have. Uh, on our agenda tonight, as I said, three items. Uh, we're going to change the order of the um, items. And uh, so I'll ask for a motion to amend the uh, agenda to change. Uh, we're going to change the order. We'd like to put the fence appeal first and uh, then the open public hearing. Uh, with a request from Peter Plunkett and then the open public hearing from Jeffrey and David Hunt. So that would be the new order. So I'm going to ask for a motion to amend that. Uh, I'll make a motion. Motion by Commissioner Spainhauer. Second. Second by Commissioner Lutz. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. So the first item then on the agenda will be the fence appeal. It's to consider an appeal by I plus S group on behalf of Austin School District from the six foot fence high restriction in the Austin City Code section 4.70 subdivision, subdivision five. The petitioner is installing a new HVAC system and wishes to have an eight foot high fence around the perimeter of the system for safety reasons as well as allowing greater security and screening. And I would just note some of the changes that we did tonight are because we only have a quorum until 630 and at that time our meeting will end and any meetings that or any any um, hearings that are in front of us will be continued until our March meeting at that point um, we would need a motion um, the um, fence appeal is as uh, Mr. Kime noted uh, Commissioner Kime noted is uh, from the Austin School District they are installing a new HVAC system which is their heating ventilation and air conditioning system they um, are installing that in the mechanical building which is located across the street from the high school and this is the graphic which shows i i believe you have that in your packets mm -hmm. and the green area is the area where the new hvac will be located 
they are taking out the underground HVAC system, which they've had some leakage and some problems with, um, and believe that the an above ground system would improve their ability to maintain it and prevent leaks and other kinds of um, issues and I believe that that will be a more efficient system and because of the existing infrastructure that they prefer that location um, cost and um, well cost wise I guess would be uh, one of the considerations um, for the school and then also just the, the locality. The um, new HVAC system will be above ground and will be located in the space that's X'd out in the green or dashed or um, diagonal lines. There will be a reduction of approximately 11 parking spots, but the um, parking would still be in compliance with what's required for the high school. Um, the school intends to put up an eight foot fence um, with privacy slats. That would look something along these lines. And this is a fence from the IJ Holden site. The, um, there was also submitted a, a document that has the specs for the chain link and the gates. There's also um, some graphics that show specifically what the HVAC, this parking striping plan would be and the um, height of the HVAC units versus the um, fencing. The HVAC unit um, with the uh, sound attenuation enclosure would go over the fence by about four feet. The city ordinance allows the council to uh, allow fences greater than six feet in height um, if they find that that is appropriate for that particular instance. Um, here we are looking at um, the reason for the fencing, which would be to, again, enclose the HVAC area, pr provide some protection and screening. Um, it would also um, would not encroach on the sidewalk. Um, there are no inlets or outlets near the fenced area where the fence would be blocking or causing any obstructions. The um, school district uh, and its consultants have dis just determined that the, um, again, that this area is the appropriate area for their HVAC system. Um, and if you need some additional information, I can provide that. So it looks like the fencing will go right along uh, the sidewalk on 4th Street then? Is that where that, for, for uh, distance between Building in yes, it's about, I think it's about 46 feet that would go along the 4th Street Northwest Street. And can you clarify the entrance to the fenced-in area? Is that only accessible through the mechanical building or is there access? Yes, it would be accessible through the mechanical okay, building. So there's no doors on the perimeter of the, of the fence? Not that I'm aware of and I think I can clarify that, but it would yes I agree that would kind of defeat the purpose of making it a protective enclosure correct so it looks like it would not uh, interfere with line of sight you know, with any uh, traffic or um, just in the parking lot going around the, the fenced area there to the other side would be the only way Right, it's, it's essentially the, um, it's not even halfway between that parking lot, uh, that parking lot between Pacelli and the mechanical building. It might be maybe a little over a quarter of that parking area. And then the, um, there are no, like I said, there's no entrances or outlets there in that along 4th fourth, fourth Street. Um, the, uh, adjoining property owners would be essentially the the city on that w would be the right of way of the city on the sidewalk area and then the rest of the fencing is within their property lot lines so what action is required for us we're recommending to the council this is a recommendation to the council whether 
the uh, school should be allowed to put up an eight foot fence rather than a six foot that they're allowed. Okay, any other questions from the commissioners? <clears throat> the district's in favor of this approach, yes. I assume? Yes. No questions. Okay, then I will uh, go ahead and ask for a motion. I'll make a motion. Second. I make a motion that the um, uh, that we recommend uh, to allow the appeal to go forward to the Austin City Council. I'd like to cite the staff recommendations um, that the fence will not encroach on the sidewalk. There's no inlets or outlets near the fenced area. The fencing height appears necessary to adequately screen and secure the mechanical equipment. The off-street parking requirements are met. It seems to me that it's a safety issue and it's one that makes sense. Um, I don't see any problem with recommending them to allow this. Okay, we have a motion to approve. I second. Second, we have a motion by Commissioner Spinhauer uh, to approve <coughs> and uh, a second by Commissioner Stewart. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay, motion passes. The next item on the agenda then will be the open public hearing to consider a request from Peter D. Plunkett, 309 21st Street Southwest, Austin, Minnesota, to amend an existing conditional use permit, changing the age restriction from age 12 to age 7 and allowing up to five guests at one time. The property is located in an R1 single family residential district. This action is pursuant to Austin City Code 11.56, subdivision 3A. The existing conditional use permit was approved in November on the 5th of 2012. Correct. The uh, existing conditional use permit was granted in 2012. The current permit allows as follows. It limits vehicles to two guest vehicles. It limits guests to three. There's no on-street parking allowed, no signs, no children under age 12, no pets, no parties or special events, no food or liquor sales, no gift sales, and no smoking. And Mr. Plunkett is asking the Planning Commission to amend the current conditional use permit to allow children seven and older and to allow five guests rather than three um, to accommodate families. He um, is subject to the same requirements that he was when he first uh, applied for conditional use permit. The only issues though that we are looking at is whether it should the two um, the um, age and the number of guests should be amended or should not be amended. And the ordinances that we would look at would be section 11.30 subdivision 3i um, that does conditionally allow for bed and breakfast occupations which the conditional use permit was initially um, granted. Um, 11.56 subdivision 3 requires that any change would require this additional procedure again. 11.56 is the probably what you're used to looking at that um, requires that the commission consider the proposed use, uh, the effect of the pro proposed use on the health, safety, and general welfare of the occupants of the surrounding land, <coughs> excuse me, including land values as well as the preservation of natural features. Um, the commission should look at whether the use will create an excessive, excessive burden. We're talking about the amended use. Um, whether there would, the use is sufficiently compatible or separated by distances or screening um, from adjacent residentially zoned use or used land, which this area is all residential. Um, the use, in the opinion of the Planning Commission, is reasonably related to overall needs of the city and the existing land use. The structure and site shall have an appearance that will not have an adverse effect upon adjacent properties. Use is consistent with the purpose of the zoning chapter. The um, use will not create traffic hazard or congestion. The existing businesses nearby, which there aren't any in this instance, um, and you could apply this to the rest of the neighborhood that it won't cause unnecessary noise or general unsightliness. Um, that will not result in, in the destruction, unnecessary destruction of any natural features. Um, some of the other considerations 
are the geographical area involved, whether there will be um, any depreciation of the surrounding area, the character of the surrounding area, the need for the use, um, and the Planning Commission can impose any additional considerations that they feel are necessary to protect the best interests of the surrounding area or the city as a whole. Um, the only additional things that we would add in the staff report or are things that we had listed in the last is that if there's any necessary building code improvements because of the added number of guests that Mr. Plunkett would comply with those requirements um, and that he again state the restate the business occupation um, business uh, hours and occupation and then the um, petitioner included some pictures of the outside and interior of the home that's one of the pictures of the exterior which is and this is the guest part of that's the house correct, correct? And this is the guest bathroom and the guest bedroom and the kitchen area. And this is the living, That's living room. Yeah. And this is another angle of the living room. And then Mr. Plunkett did um, send me some additional materials that I believe were forwarded to you. Um, there were some comments from people that had stayed at the house as well as an article um, that was featured in this magazine and and then I think uh, some slides from his previous PowerPoint presentation and if the Commission has any other questions has the no. city received any complaints since the um, conditional use permit was granted in 2012? No. And I have not received any calls on this uh, amendment. So the, they were notified in the... Uh, yeah, 300 the feet point. from the property. Those neighbors were notified. So no, no comments for or against? From I have not received any, although there may be someone here who wants to speak to that. I have questions for Mr. Plunkett, but I don't have any questions for me. Sure. Well, actually, Holly, maybe I do. I mean, just kind of stick tight because I do have a couple statute questions. Yeah. Um, Holly, let me start with you. Um, what he's asking for is he's asking to go from essentially what is a guest house with one bedroom um, to go from three people to five people. Right, so yep, so my mind immediately goes to housing regulations and statutes for the number of people that are allowed to stay in a certain amount of square footage. So I would like to know if we have any statutes that talk about um, the number of people that are allowed in a certain amount of square footage. That would be one question I would have. Um, I'd also question the fire code. Um, if there's any statutes about fire code that precludes from having five people in a one bedroom guest house. And if there is, and that goes to our last recommendation, if there are any requirements for licensing, additional licensing because of the added guests, or if there are additional fire code regulations or any kinds of um, alterations that would need to be made um, due to those requirements, he would, he would need to do that before he could invite additional guests. And so then it would be essentially... Us, I would assume? Um, well, no, at that point he would, he would technically have that allowed as conditional use but it, as a practical matter, he couldn't engage in that until he got until he got it right. until he got it correct. Okay. So, so we don't have to solve for any of that tonight. We just have to uh, make a decision and make it a condition that he meets uh, safety, health and safety and building codes yes. as part of the yes what we, our action. Okay. Correct. Okay. So now I have some questions for Mr. Plunkett. Sure. Does he need to state his name and yes. address and all that? Yes. Hi. Uh, good evening. My name is Peter Plunkett, and I'm the uh, hotel manager of the Elam House. And your address? 309 21st Street, Southwest, Thank Austin, you. Minnesota, 55912. Okay, so Mr. Plunkett, I guess the questions that I had, I did read all the reviews. Mm -hmm. um, it sounds like people really enjoy the Elam House. They have. What I noticed was that all of the reviews were 55 and over as far as who they recommend to come to the house. 
and um, I was looking at the pictures and I remember going through that house we went over there and we went through that house and it's really nice but um, it's very the guest house is not real big I think that you have one bed right I do but there's also the overflow room downstairs that we're able to use we talked about that at the last uh, planning meeting and also at the council meeting that we have the room the maids quarters that would also be available that's the reason why we had the two in the back and then the one person downstairs in the maids room I don't know if I recall the maids quarters being part of what was to be allowed for one guest stay am I I've got the that? minutes yeah okay oh, all yeah. right so that's fine so what's down in the maids quarters remind my refresh my well memory. the maids quarters is an entirely separate room and it's got its own ingress and egress it's got its own shower and bathroom and toilet and so forth it's and got how many beds just one bed just one bed yeah I mean it's a double bed okay and we've got a futon that's available for the guest bedroom it's a it's a large pretty large uh, bedroom and the, when I've had three people come we've had the futon either set up in the in the guest bedroom itself mm -hmm. or in the back living room with no complaints whatsoever okay so if we have the maids quarters and we have another double bed down there with a futon well we could have the futon down there too but but, I, I've but got we have a futon have, somewhere in the yes, picture absolutely so. okay so we're looking at being able to accommodate five people right without a problem right so okay because that was my question and I quite honestly even though I was there I do not remember the maids quarters so you know, thank you for correcting me um, and then again I, I guess I don't really care about the seven age from ten I mean you know there's three years difference between a seven-year-old and a ten-year-old right. so if they're with their families and you know my main concern was do we have enough square footage to accommodate five people when we're going from three to five but you know from my if it's the guest house and you can use that and that is all if I recall that's all stationed away from your home though there's a way that you partition your home so there's that they pocket, don't, yeah they can't a, get into the guest or the uh, main house so right you know once the I, tour is over the pocket door goes across and locks and right I usually don't see them very much after that unless you choose to give them a tour or whatever well I already yeah I do do the tour typically how it works is they check in at around four I get them organized get them checked in I do the tour at about 530 we're done at 630 they go to dinner they come back at about eight or nine and do whatever they do back there read books watch videotapes whatever they want to do and enjoy the house and then typically leave in the morning at around nine or ten okay so I guess then my only concern would be the vehicles um, we already limit the vehicles to two guests and right. I would not want to see that increase no and I'm not asking for that right and uh, you're not asking for no, it so no, I think I don't want um, that either really yeah I, I don't think your neighbors would like it either no um, so okay those were the questions and concerns that I had thank you and, and the one thing that I wanted to point out in connection with that is the reason why I'm asking for this is because I've had a lot of people call and ask well can we bring our kids mm -hmm. you know and yeah, I have to sure. say well if you got one yes if you have more than one no right well and I, <laughs> so. like I said I, I did child care for many years and I don't think that seven to ten if they're supervised by parents who are there and paying some pretty good money right. to stay for the night um, I don't think that the child is going to be reckless and, and cause a problem to the neighbors, which is what we would worry about. So I don't really have a problem personally with going from 10 to 7 years old. Right. And as a practical matter, most of the time we do the tour, they go to dinner, and then they're, they're in bed. Right. <laughs> you know, so there's not a lot. They're of under the purview of their parents. So. And I'm there, too. It's not like I'm leaving the house <laughs> and, you know, I might leave for a short period of time to have dinner. But uh, typically that's when they're out for dinner, too. So then we're right. both gone at the same time. Right. Um, so... Yeah, we've had nothing but good reviews from uh, all the people that have stayed at, at our house. And um, it's been an enjoyable experience for me and also the people that have come. Um, it's a, pretty much a cerebral group of people. It's not a bunch of people that come for parties or drinking or anything like that. Right. How so, many have you had since you got your conditional use permit? How many families do you think have? Well, I, had, I, I count it by overnight stays. Last year I had 50 overnight stays. Um, and the year before that I had about half of, half of that so I've, I've doubled my my occupancy uh, from okay. the, the first year to the second year and um, and I, if I counted up the number of people that came some are groups of three you know and some are not you know so it's hard to tell the very few people come alone <laughs> right well that makes sense right and then the other thing too is a lot of times I'll have some a couple call and say well I'd like to invite my brother and his wife mm -hmm. and I have to say no right you know? So that's the reason why it's kind of a fine tuning of what we're doing right. already. And yeah, and I get that. I, I think you've answered adequately. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. And one other thing I'd like to point out too is uh, it does stimulate tourism in town. Uh, we've had people from 19 different states and Ontario come to Austin 
And most of them say, I've never heard of Austin before. <laughs> And they typically will go to the Spam Museum or the Hormel Historic Home or, you know, mm -hmm. any of the other nice uh, tourist destinations right. that we have in Austin. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's been great, uh, I think, for Austin, yeah. and, and uh, I, I think it's worked out real well. Thank so you. as I said before, we're not asking to change anything else in the condi current condition of mm -hmm. use permit. I believe we do comply with the requirements of Section 1156, Subdivision 1. I don't know if you want me to go through all that. As not to why really, because we're working on a time constraint at okay. 6.30, and I think that unless you guys have any other questions, the commissioners have other questions or whatever, I think we're ready to move along. So. Okay. Any other questions or concerns from anybody? Nope. Okay. Is there anyone here, uh, the public, who would like to address the commissioner? Yes. Or state your name and address, please. My name is Patricia Dahl. I live at 311 21st Street Southwest, Austin, Minnesota. We are adjacent to the pro property in question. Um, I have to tell you that probably our major concern at this point, because this has already been approved as being a B and B, we didn't know it was a hotel, uh, is where is this going? Now this is, this is the sec second time. He got in once and it was, we, we were led to believe that it was to be three people, a simple operation, no food, two cars in the driveway. Now we're asking for five people and he's asking to have children from 12 to seven. It was 12, now it's down to seven. Is this just another step along the way? What's coming next? And I've questioned Peter, and I don't get a real clear answer other than, oh no, this is it. Well, we, that's what we were told the first time. And here we are again. Um, a hotel in that neighborhood doesn't fit. Right now, the way it is, okay. What are we gonna do? It's there. But if you keep expanding, and adding the number of people, and it's particularly in that uh, footage that we're talking about, it isn't going to be very effective for the neighborhood. We are not there to provide his income. We are there as property owners and people who have been in Austin for a long time and we've supported our community and we feel that we needed, we needed an opportunity to tell you how we feel about this. You know, it's fine when you're a couple blocks away. You, it doesn't bother anybody else. We're there. Excuse Can me. Can I address your concerns? Because I, I hear you. I yeah, absolutely that's our concern. Understand. Is this, is this the end? I can tell you how I feel, what my thought process is, and I'll share it with the other commissioners and they can pipe in where they uh, seem appropriate. But um, the reason that I asked what the accommodations are and needed to be clear in my mm -hmm. mind is because quite honestly, I think five is the limit, that's it. I'm not willing to go any more than that. So I will go on record as saying that if he were to come before me again, mm -hmm. I would be hard pressed to say yes, because I feel that the accommodations are pretty much t at limited out. I mean, if we have a bedroom downstairs and we have a, a small bedroom mm -hmm. upstairs and we have a futon in my mind that's it so for me I don't know how the rest of you feel but I, I feel at that point you. you're right you are encroaching because then you're gonna ask for another thank you an, you're gonna ask for another automobile and pretty soon there's gonna be some Sorry. off street parking that you know just kind of just you know yeah, don't make a I big know. scene you know I, I I don't want that to happen. I think that the, it does bring tourism into the town, but on the other hand, it is a residential area and Absolutely. everybody has to be a good neighbor. Yeah. So I can see going to five and I see here that it is no children under age 12, so I'm corrected, so thank you. That's, um, yeah. And I, you know, again, if it's seven to 12, I, I truly feel like this is um, a type of um, family that they're not going to let the kids run out at 11 o'clock at night and run the streets. I mean, well, we're talking about a seven-year-old yeah, child. And you realize we're right next door. Yes, and, I, and yeah. it's not like there's a seven-year-old plus a 12-year-old plus a 14-year-old plus an 18-year-old plus a, you know, mm -hmm. I mean, we're talking about mm -hmm. adults and a child. So I don't have a problem with that, but I do understand where you're coming from. And quite honestly, I think at this, this request is a max request for well, me. We would hope that, but you see, we thought that at at the beginning but I don't think that anybody really thought about you know you could start at three and maybe go to four you know I mean really truly I don't know that that was really where our mind 
well uh, was it no. was it was really how is this going to work and is it going to accommodate mm -hmm. being in the setting it's in <laughs> and still be a good neighbor now at this point I can see that you know I understand the slippery slope mm -hmm. um, but I think mm -hmm. that it's up to us to say yay or nay and my thought process is such that I think this is the limit so and there were things that were spoken of that weren't done that, for instance a, a, a decent hedge between our pr properties that was spoken of and never done <laughs> If it's, it's not a part of the conditional use permit, yeah. however, we can't. Well, I'm that. just saying that Again, not that's a good neighbor kind of thing care. that you may want to talk to him about. We and, have. You know, keep talking. Yeah. Keep talking. Okay. <laughs> Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Are there any other questions to me? Have you uh, noticed any other, as far as being a neighbor, I mean, what issues? Are there any issues? Do you have any other issues other than you're saying? No. Okay. No. Not at this, uh, other than that we are not happy that that's what it is. Of course right. not. Not in our neighborhood. We don't. Mm -hmm. We don't want it there, but it's there, and we're dealing with it. But we don't want it to go any further. Mm -hmm. It can't because pretty soon you're going to have Hotel Austin over there, and we don't want that. And no, and certainly no one that li lives in that neighborhood would want it either. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Thanks Thank for you for coming out tonight. We appreciate you braving the uh, conditions <laughs> to come mm -hmm. talk to us. Well, we we wanted to be heard. We felt we should be. And I'm glad you came came onto the you. podium. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Do you want to see the pictures of what the hedge looked like back in July? Not really. Okay. Yeah. All right. It's not I've something that's before us right yeah, now. So really, quite was, honestly, I just kind of <coughs> want to keep moving on. So. Just in case. Nope. So this would be a decision by the. Oh, go ahead, Steve. Yeah, you can ask gonna if there are any more. Any more questions from the commissioners? Any other discussion? Any other comments? Anybody else uh, like to speak? The only thing I would like to say is just one more thing. Um, you know, when this was approved, it was approved under the conditional use permit statute as a bed and breakfast. I pay a hotel tax. I think everybody knew from the very beginning that this was classified as a hotel, you know, whether it's two people or three people or five people, it's a hotel, whatever. I don't know why she didn't understand that, but uh, that's, that's the reality of it. It's not, not any big surprise that I know of. Thank you. <coughs> Thank you. Okay, so. So this would be a decision by the Planning Commission um, whether to amend the conditional use permit to allow children seven, age seven and older, and to allow five guests. Okay, so. And any conditions that you additional, if you feel there should be more conditions, that's your decision. So if we were to say that that is a maximum limit and he can't come before the, are we able to say that or not? That's I'll defer to Mr. Byram on that question. <laughs> uh, I'm not comfortable with you telling an applicant that no matter what the circumstances, yeah, they can't say that. <laughs> come and, and submit a valid application. You'll decide that application at that time based upon the circumstances that exist at that time and the content of the application. Yep, thank you. Okay, after hearing discussion, uh, I guess I will ask for a motion on this uh, conditional, use, uh, uh, conditional use permit. Uh, I'll make a motion that we approve uh, the amended conditional use permit um, under the following conditions. Uh, limits the vehicles to two guest vehicles limits the guests to five, no on-street parking, no signs, no children under age seven, no pets, no parties or special events, no food or liquor sales, no gift sales, no smoking. Um, in addition, uh, the property owner will have to meet all building and safety codes um, having to do with this new uh, permit. And um, no we need a clarification of the hours of business. Is that right? Yes, and I believe Mr. Plunkett did speak to that, but he. I, I, I can clarify that. Uh, okay. Basically, we're. Just say no change to the hours. That can just be part of her motion, I guess. Oh, okay. Okay, yeah. No change to the. Okay. Um, and I, I would just say uh, my reasoning is that you've gone through a couple years without complaint. Um, so I, I feel like uh, that has earned you a, a little bit of, of room to make some changes and um, 
certainly if there starts to be uh, problems, uh, I would expect that um, we'll be talking about it again. But yeah. um, well, yeah, I don't want any problems. Yes, yeah, nobody does, so. Okay, we have a motion to approve from Commissioner Howie. Second. Second from Commissioner Lutz. Is there any other discussion? Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Opposed. Okay. Motion passes. Motion passes. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Four to one. <laughs> That's for yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> Okay, the next item on our agenda is another open public hearing to consider requests from Jeffrey and David Hun, 70136 Drive Southwest, Austin, Minnesota, for a variance from the Austin City Zoning Code sections 11.33, subdivision 5C, and 11.60, subdivision 4H and F, requiring separation between buildings and setback from property lines abutting uh, a public street or highway and other property boundary lines. I would probably just start with the, um, this will be a recommendation to the city council whether to grant the variance or not. Um, and the planning commission um, should be looking at the following uh, criteria. And Mr. Byram, if I need to tweak anything let me know um, that the variance is in keeping with the spirit and intent of the ordinance and that the undue hardship um, actually now we have it's called practical difficulties is that correct um, that the landowner would like to use the property in a reasonable manner that is prohibited by the ordinance um, and that the plight of the landowner is due to circumstances unique to the property not created by the landowner and that the variance will not alter the essential character of the locality. Um, and the standard above is a judicial interpretation of the, um, that the property in question cannot be put to a reasonable use um, if under conditions allowed by the ordinances. The economic considerations alone shall not constitute an undue hardship if a reasonable use of the property exists under the terms of the ordinance. Um, there, this this is issue uh, started last summer prior to my joining the city. Um, it's a little, still not entirely clear to me, but uh, Mr. Hunt can explain when he has an opportunity to speak, but um, the property is owned by Jeffrey Hun, who is the son of David Hun. David Hun is here tonight um, on behalf of Jeffrey and himself. I, I understand um, to ask that um, a garage and I'll come up now and I did include some recent pictures of the garage and the materials um, he has currently in, initially on the property there was a 14 by 24 foot garage and a storage shed, which is um, this. Uh, let me grab a. This is Mr. Hunt's property here. This was the um, storage shed and his original garage that was located on the property. Um, sometime during the summer and fall, Mr. Hunt purchased an additional garage, a 24 foot by 36.5 foot. He removed this structure, moved this garage to the back of his property, and then added the larger garage next to the manufactured home. Holly? Yes. So in this picture that you're showing, is that in compliance? Was it zoning? is not. Nothing no. was in compliance. So, so it didn't start in compliance. Correct. And 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 then this change this fall got it further out of compliance. And I'm not sure when Mr. Hunt became an owner of this property. Okay. 
but we did not have any permits on file for any of those structures. Okay. So, Mr. Byram, can you clarify? Um, we're looking at a situation where it, compliance has not been enforced for probably years. Does that give us any, does that change our considerations at all or we just need to look at the situation today and, and the regulations? Well, if the applicant can prove that the non-compliance dates back prior to the enactment of our initial zoning ordinance, then it's a non-conforming use and it's sort of grandfathered in. However, if and that the date is uh, 1970-something. Actually, I think the original manufactured home park was called Wheeler Estates and was established in a, around 1966. Okay. So that would be up to the landowner to prove that, that the use dates back prior to that. The difficulty here, of course, is that that's one of the reasons why building permits are applied for and granted in order to document when uses start and to document that uses are appropriate at whatever time they begin. What appears to have occurred here is that the, the mobile home park had a rampant problem of a lack of permits being applied over a long period of time. So whether that's an enforcement issue, I mean, the city staff can't be everywhere all the time looking at every property. They generally rely upon complaints or things that are observed when they happen to be on the property for some other reason. Uh, for whatever reason, this nonconformity was not discovered and a permit wasn't applied for, so it didn't come to the attention of city staff until this issue came to a head this past summer. Based upon that record, unless the landowner or here, the tenant, has some documentation dating back before 19... 70 something when the zoning ordinance was applied i don't believe that there's a basis for us to look the other way thank you correct our zoning ordinance goes back to about 1975. the um one thing that may be an advantage to mr hunt is that um with regard to his mobile home the street that is located in the mobile home park was at one time a private street so a different setback applied to his actual to his manufactured home However, it has been a public street since the new garage was put in, so the ordinance that we have now would apply to that structure. And again, I would note that um, the, um, neither garage was permitted. Um, the distance right now, and I believe I looked at Mr. Hunt's measurements, um, between his manufactured home and the larger garage that is now here is approximately 30 inches. Um, the statute requires a separate, or the ordinance requires a separation of 20 feet between buildings in that area. Um, the manufactured home park does not have set lot lines, so the spacing between buildings is strictly determined by our ordinance so adding in um, it, adding in permanent structures is definitely gonna change how those buildings are able to be arranged in the manufactured home park um, as well as I mean if you even if you look at this picture I think if you think about the setbacks that are required in the distances between buildings not only are we talking about, from our building cold offici official standpoint, they're worried about possible fire issues or safety issues, although they've said that they could work with Mr. Hahn to make sure that those codes are met. Um, but how do you, you know, if you allow this throughout the manufactured home park and you assume that mobile homes are meant to be moved in and out, potentially, I'm not sure how you move these structures you know there's not really enough so you're saying the way the garage is now is starting to encroach on what should be the setback to the next home next to it and to well that that is setback, true you're going to lose the the existing garage the larger garage is uh, approximately six feet from the hookups in the lot adjoining that is an open lot i mean it it is available 
Um, so if someone from my were to rent it, then they can't meet setbacks either. They wouldn't be able to. No, not with that garage sitting there at Mr. Hunt's property. Okay. And um, the it, and like I said, the um, the hookups are only about six feet away, and I. And maybe you can somebody could correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe those are those fall in the center of the mobile home when it's placed on the lot. So, so yeah, no, okay, well maybe not. But anyway, so there's so even if if the hookups were right on the side of the manufactured home, it would only be a six foot difference between the manufactured home on this lot, the garage, and then the next manufactured home. I'm just going to look through my notes here and see if there's anything else. Um, another um, kind of wrinkle is that the property is actually owned by another individual, the real estate upon which the manufactured home sits. Um, my understanding was that permission was given to put up the structure by the manufactured home owner as long as all permits were acquired. Um, I had spoken to Mr. Turbine to see what arrangements he had made with um, Mr. Hahn, if any, since that, since we informed him of the issues, um, he has not provided anything as far as what his opinion would be, whether it should be removed or whether a variant should be granted. Um, again, there was, um, and then I added in here also that there was a time period um, in the 90s 1999 where um, there was an attempt to lessen the setback requirements but no ordinance was passed so there was a decision apparently either not to move forward with it or it was brought forward and didn't pass do you have any other questions of me on this issue so is this the, is this the current status or is there another I? No, this is an old aerial photo. Um, this is, so the, the photos from, I don't have any other aerial photos that would show the exact, unless Mr. Hun brought something with him. I'm not sure. Excuse me? Do you have any photographs of the? No, I don't have a photograph. I just got a print drawn. Okay, here, okay. So. so this is the new garage, or the bigger garage, next to the mobile home. And the other garage is right behind it at this point? Is that correct? Correct, yes. This is, let's see. I don't know if I have a good picture of that. This is kind of a, so this is the larger garage that's at the front of the property, and this is the smaller garage in the back. I did send notices to Mr. Hun's neighbors. I got one complaint and I got about four supportive calls. Um, so overall, it seems that his neighbors do not object to that garage being in that location. However, you know, that's part of the analysis that the commission would make um, regarding the, the character of the locality. Um, but again, keeping in mind that it's a mobile home park um, and the setbacks are um, required for specific purposes regarding to the health, safety, and um, living conditions of the people in the mobile home park. And I, I understand that it, it doesn't seem like, a, you know, like a, a big deal to some of the people that live there and, and it's a very difficult situation for Mr. Hun. Um, but uh, it uh, definitely will have an impact if, if the same kinds of development conditions continue throughout the, the manufactured home park. And I'm not sure what the demand is for garages out there. There right now is probably, I think there's maybe 10 to 12 garages out there right now. Are Mr. Those, Hunt's. Uh, did I read that? Are those all in compliance with? Or did I read that they are not either? Only no. Only about five percent. It says. Okay. Sorry. And, and only three of of the ten have permits. 
Correct. There are only three that had permits. Um, Mr. Hun's garage is one the larger garage is 24 by 36 approximately, and the next largest garage that was legally permitted out there is a 20 by 24. If we deny the variance, will Mr. Hun be required to remove the garage? Yes, we would ask the council for an order allowing us to move forward with the removal. And we have standing to do that given the number of other properties that are out of compliance as well? I mean, where do you draw the line on correcting what's already wrong? Well, but you have to start somewhere. Yeah, I don't, I don't believe that the uh, department is going to stop with just uh, this particular property. I think this is the one that is here first because it came to a head and it raised the attention on the other properties. So I have several questions for the Huns whenever you're done, okay, Holly. Okay, sure. Would either of you okay, or both yeah. of you like to approach the podium? State your name and uh, address for the record, please. I am David Hunt. The first thing I'd like to go ahead and say is... Uh, Could you give us your address first, Mr. Hunt? Excuse me? Could you state your address, please, for the record? Oh, seven, 702 36 Drive Southwest. On this paper that what you have there, it says 701. I'd like to clarify that, if I may. Great. Thank you very much. Okay. Okie doke. And what the deal is here is... I went and I checked with the, my neighbor turned around, moved his trailer up north, and he had this garage across the street from me, and he asked me if I'd like to buy it, and I asked him what he wanted for it, and he said the price of $2,000, and I turned around and I checked with the people there at the trailer court uh, about where the property lines were on this, on this uh, deal out there, and they said there is no property lines. So then I drew up a print, a print like this here, and I went up to see the city uh, up, up on the next floor up and talk to these people about get, uh, doing this project here. And first I talked to Ron and I showed him a per, what I wanted to do here. And on this deal here I have a 16 by, 60, a 16 by 80 trailer and then this is an 8 by 16 porch and in between the, this garage that used to set here, which has moved, been moved back here, there's only 30, 30 inches in between there. So I knew darn well when I put this garage up here, I'd have to have a firewall because it's too close. Anything within five feet, you have to have a firewall. So, okay. So then I turned around and I went up and talked to Ron and he showed me a picture of a building that had a firewall there and the other building burnt down right beside it and the firewall is still standing, which I understand that. So then from there he sent me over to see Craig Hoyam and he works for the city there. He's I think a building inspector or something. I don't know what his uh, title is, but anyway, I showed him here what I wanted to do. And he told me that the deal is on this garage here, if I, I built this here, I have to be 10 feet from the street. Okay, then I had to be 10 feet from this garage over to the trailer. And this, this cement slab was in here before and all I did is pour the cement slab back here. Well, Craig told me to go ahead and ask me when I was gonna do this project. And I said, well, my boys are out and working in uh, North Dakota where the oil fields are and they wouldn't be back for about approximately a month so it would probably be in a month and a month and a half. And what Craig told me to do is he said you go ahead and when you get ready to go ahead and do it, set up your forms for your concrete and everything and get it all set up and I'll come out and inspect it and we'll get the paperwork started on it. So I said fine. Mr. Hun, can I interrupt you just for a second? Sure. I First of all, this I have questions for you, and we're probably not going to get to the rest of this by 6.30 if we don't move things along. Um, and what you're telling us, basically, unless Mr. Hoyam is here, we don't have any way of validating that. Right. So, But I have questions for you that can get us expeditiously along. Otherwise, this is all going to die right now, and we're going to have to come back in March. Well, so, I won't mind that if it's up to you. I would like to ask you some questions. Sure, go right ahead. Move things along sure. if you don't mind. I certainly right don't want to. I want to give you time to explain yourself. But yes. is that okay with you? Yes, that's okay, fine with me. Thank you very much. 
Okay, so I need to know then, in the interest of time, quickly, what um, is this garage used for? What is the garage used for? Yes. I have four, uh, four vehicles I put inside of the garage, and what I had out there is a, which I did not know, nobody told me about it, is I have a shuttle service. I do shuttling for the uh, Hormels, Right. The big, so one of the biggest be, employers in town. It could be that it is used for a business purpose. It yes. Could be. Okay, my next question. Um, why were no permits pulled? Why were not permits pulled? Why were no permits pulled? That I do not know because I talked to uh, Greg Hoyam and he told me when I want to get ready to go ahead and contact him and he'd go ahead and come out and take a look at the con. But Mr. Hun, do you not know that there's an application process for a permitting? That's, excuse me, but the, when he told me to get the paperwork started, I took it for granted that's when it was going to get happen. Okay, but quite I, honestly, I made one mistake. The, the burden of pulling permits is, is on, the, on you, the homeowner, or I, the. I understand. And so I, I guess. Where I'm coming from is I just see an egregious denial of the permit process here, which really kind of irks me a little bit because as a homeowner, I have to pull permits. We have a permitting process for a reason, and you have to do your due diligence, and I don't believe that you did due diligence in this case. But what I can state for everybody is that I'm going straight to the staff recommendations of the undue hardship. And the undue hardship is a standard that is a judicial interpretation of the property in question. And we do not have the authority to bend that judicial interpretation or change it in any way, shape, or form. We have to comply to it. And if that undue hardship is not met, we have a three-part test here, A, B, and C. If, we, if all parts of those tests cannot be met, we cannot grant the approval of the variance. And so I'm looking at this undue hardship and I'm saying that A, B, and C, none of them have been met because there really isn't an undue hardship. The plight of the landowner is due to circumstances unique to the property, not created by the landowner. No, I mean, there, you, it's not like you had the garage there and you had nowhere else to put it and you had to have it stay there. This was something that you chose to do. You chose to do it unpermitted and it's not meeting the test of the judicial interpretation. So in my mind, that cuts straight to the chase, which is we cannot, if we're, if we're going to look at the judicial interpretation, we're not in a position to be able to grant this variance, quite honestly. So that's why I asked you, because I think that with that alone, in my mind, that tells us that as planning commissioners, we have to deny this variance. Okay, the only thing is I'm saying I was working with Craig Hoyman and he told me then when I get ready to do it where I made my mistake and I didn't know it and I did not know how long a building permit would be before you have to renew it or anything. I did not, I, my mistake I made in the first place is I did not buy a permit right away before I started to work on a month and a half before it. But when Craig told me that uh, you get a hold of me and we'll get the paperwork started, I took it that's when we was going to do it because I was not doing anything to the land or moving garages or doing anything before that month and a half was over with. And that's unfortunate for you. I, I totally understand that, Mr. Hunt. I'm not saying that you didn't. I'm just saying, I mean, because people can make mistakes, and I understand well, that. Yeah, we're all human. It's us Correct. as planning commissioners in a position to look at the overall picture. Correct. And to make an interpretation. And when it is so clearly spelled out that the judicial t interpretation gives us a three-part test and we cannot meet that test, we have no choice but to deny the variance. Uh, I don't really disagree with Commissioner Spainhauer, but I feel like uh, we have a process and the process is for people to be heard and unfortunately due to circumstances, all of the people here are not going to be able to be fully heard tonight. So um, my suggestion would be that we table the, this um, appeal in, until March. Is that something that uh, I can make a motion about? How does that work? My recommendation is that you word it that you're going to continue this hearing until March and that avoids having to republish certain things because those people who are interested are here and they're hearing that it's going to take place in March. If you say table, then we have to bring it off the table next. So it's just a Robert's Rules mm -hmm. question. Yeah. The word continue allows it to just, we stop it temporarily, we pick it up where we left off at the next meeting and a decision will be made there. People have an opportunity to speak there. So if that's your motion, I think it's appropriate. That's my motion. Okay, we have a motion <laughs> from Commissioner Helley to continue this hearing to our March meeting.
That meeting will be March 10th, 2015 at the same time, 5.30. Okay, is there a second? I'll second. Second by Commissioner Lutz. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Opposed. Opposed. May I ask you one question? When is the next meeting? You have a certain date on that now? Could you tell me what it is so I could have my other people come then? Yep. I know it's at 5.30, but I don't know what the date is. Should be March 10th. I can send you, as we March spoke 10th. about earlier, March 10th, then? I can send you a notice. Okay. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank it's you for listening to me. I just got my story, start, uh, story started, and I appreciate you taking time to listen to just me. To Thank you very much. Which way did you vote? vote? I want to make sure I heard this correctly. I think there were two <coughs> dissensions, weren't yeah. there? Yeah. So yeah. you, you voted to continue? Exactly. Okay. Three to two. So. Yeah, I mean, the motion passes three to two, three but to two. it just needs to be for the record that it's three to two. Yeah. Okay. All right, thank you. Be before we adjourn, I would like to apologize. I know it's an inconvenience. You guys now have to come out again uh, next month, um, but I hope it's worthwhile to be able to be heard. Uh, we want to hear from you. Well, I thank you for letting me start to talk about it. Appreciate it. Thank you. You have a very good evening. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Any other business, uh, Holly? Nothing other than the uh, Planning Commission is invited to training session after this meeting. Um, it's not mandatory, but we're welcome to join us in the conference room. Okay. Thank you. So with that, I'll ask for a motion, motion to, to adjourn. adjourn. I'll, I'll make a motion. Motion by Commissioner Spainhauer to adjourn. Second. Second by Commissioner Lutz. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you very much. Thank you.